We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. Hey guys, this is Connor McBride here for First Updates Now. I am here at Bishop Garden High School in Nashua, New Hampshire, checking in with Team 3467 Wyndham Windup at the official 2020 Week Zero. This robot looks very beautiful, black and gold. We're going to dive right into this robot. We're going to start talking about the drivetrain of the robot. So who would like to talk about that first? So our drivetrain runs, runs at about 12 feet per second. Um, it's an eight-wheel drive with four pneumatics. So there's pneumatics, pneumatic wheels on each corner, and then there's four Colsons in the center. Um, they're six-inch wheels, um, so it would help us to very easily get over the uh, rendezvous point and the berm. Um, we also, last year we had uh, eighth-inch metal, so we wanted to cut down on weight. So this year, all our whole drivetrain, our whole drivetrain is uh, 16th-inch metal. So, um, all right, awesome. Next, we're going to move on to the intake system of the robot. So our intake, uh, you can put it up. All, is basically it has three rollers. Um, we have our wheels here, so you can go ahead and intake. Um, so basically, they just go straight in right over the bumper. Um, we also have a human player intake right here. Um, so basically, we just drive straight up to the human player station, uh, drop balls straight in, and they'll go straight into our serialization system. So I can talk about our serialization system as well. So we decided in 2016, we did a sort of a CD7 kind of thing for our intake. So we would place it over on the ground and we'd pick up balls that way. So we decided to take that idea and implement it into our robot. So it's basically an active ground. So we call it the CD7. Um, we have basically rollers over here that bring the balls from over here in, and then a roller that brings it straight to the center. Um, so yeah, now we can talk about the, uh, the uh, ball path. So our ball path is pretty much a 775 on chains leading, so when this, t so when this is powered, the Colson brings the ball up, around, and we have dry slide on here, so the ball will move and slide easier into our gate wheel which just spins in and feeds it to our shooter, which is a four pound flywheel, which we are also using falcons and belts to power the shooter. And we found that easier and like easier to use. And then a big thing that helps us get to our electrical is there's thumb screws right here that when we take both of them out, this whole thing can be pushed up and get to our PDP and all our electronics. Awesome, thanks guys. We also have, we also want to talk about your design process as well of this robot. It looks very beautiful. I'd love to see how you guys uh, went through the thought process of building this robot and where we are setting today. Yeah, so the design process for building this robot has definitely been a wild ride. We started out knowing that we wanted to be able to go under the trench and we want to be able to shoot well. However, those two things are kind of hard, especially if you're trying to manage all five game pieces. So we went through a lot of different iterations of if we actually want to go short or we'd rather go tall or uh, curving versus more of a straight. But we wanted to be able to intake from one end and shoot it from the other. So it's a quick back and forth movement. So that's where a couple of our students came up with this cool snail shell looking pattern here that allows us to have all this intake on here and shoot from the same direction. Um, there was a lot of different iterations and something that helped us out a lot in this design process was a project that we did this preseason before build season started where we built a drive base for practice and to kind of teach a lot of freshmen more stuff about uh, robotics. With that drive base, we were able to prototype a lot of our mechanisms, so we had a couple different iterations of this big S looking path, and we were able to slap it on there, build a mock-up CD7, mock-up intake, and see how it all worked together, see where we had faults, if it was going to work. So it's definitely been a uh, fun process, and we felt like we were really prepared. The one thing that is on our design, uh, that is a design goal that we don't have on here, is our climber and that would be either telescoping or something of that manner. 
All right, this is an awesome robot, guys. You're very proud of what you've accomplished so far this season. 3467 Wyndham Windup, they're going to be competing at North Shore Week 3 and Southern New Hampshire Week 5. You can catch them in action. This has been a Behind the Bumpers interview of 3467 Wyndham Windup at Week 0 2020. We'll see you next time on First Updates Now. Talk to you then. The largest robot reveal, Premiere Night, is back on Sunday, February 23rd at 6 p.m. Eastern. Submissions are due on Friday, February 21st. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.